proud of uh, everything that's happened. We started this year with 32 teams. Just two years ago, we only had 12 teams, so we have expanded mightily. This is thanks to a lot of really dedicated students, dedicated teachers, dedicated teaching artists who've been going to school since September working with the students, and we're very happy at how things have come out. So like I said, we started with 32 teams. You will see four of those teams. One of them will leave with a trophy full of Pop-Tarts. Because that's, of course, what poetry was intended for. But, uh, as I say, you get to see four teams. We've got 32 winning teams, though, because the work that's been put out by every team has been fantastic, and we're so proud. Yes. You'll see uh, some poems by a few of the other teams also. We've got a, couple a few showcase poems tonight, some other awards. It's going to be a heck of a night. Are you ready to get it started? All right. Nicholas Bell is a coach of one of our new Council Bluffs teams, which we're very proud to have uh, started in. He's at Count Council Bluffs Thomas Jefferson. He's going to come up and introduce our first showcase poet. Let's welcome up Nicholas Bell. So as Matt said, um, I had the opportunity to coach a wonderful young team over at Thomas Jefferson Council Bluffs this year. Um, the particular poet that we're bringing up this evening came in um, just kind of on a whim, checking out the poetry club, wanted to see what it, was, what it was all about, and wrote a poem that at first we kind of had to ask, well, who is this about? Um, so from where the poem started to where it is tonight, um, it was a tremendous honor to be a part of that, see it come to fruition, as it was with all of my teams. So please do me the um, honor of putting your hands together for Claire Yale. Jefferson High School, and my poem is called Be Funny. The alarm rings at 6.30 a.m., which rolls to 6.50, which crawls to 7. Be funny! I hear the back door creak. Mom's home. I feel relief. She doesn't see me, but yells cheerfully, good morning, ladies. My sisters and I reply, with muted voices, mourning. Her greeting echoes in my head. Is that her talking or the meds? I ask because she's been staring at a screen all night. But when she comes home, eHarmony is glaring back at her. It makes me wonder. Maybe for her, it's not be funny. Maybe for her, it's find someone. Settle down. Don't be alone. Why am I scared that that door won't creak, that she won't come home one of these days, be funny so she won't leave? My eyes are glazed with last night's episodes, and I'm crumpled up like a disappointing song. My author throws me off the couch into the garbage. I brush my yellowed teeth stained with diet soda, be funny. She sprawled out on her new bed. She bought herself no help from men, but she keeps looking. Maybe I'm scared because I can't compete with the men that come through that back door. It'd be funny if I said I didn't want her affection, but I try too hard for all that attention. Once, I did a Schwarzenegger impression for two hours straight. <laughs> By the 15th, get to the chapa, she was in another room. Sometimes I skip sleep because I'm funnier while exhausted but her head is sunken deep in those pillows she bought like the ones I try to avoid as I attempt to be her next George Carlin. She's the one who made me realize for the first time, you don't have to be happy to laugh, then be funny so she won't cry. 
When she wakes, she sips on coffee for an hour or more. This time the screen is match.com and the conversation becomes one-sided. Between me, myself, and this jerk who keeps saying be funny, I poke and prod her with the words that I held in from school that day. When I get no response, it's clear to me. This competition is just too much. I think I might forfeit because I don't think I'll ever be funny enough. Thank you.